The key to this synergy of speed and power is punch technique, punch location, and punch frequency. With your elbows tucked in behind your fist, the energy of each punch is maximized. And because the punch is delivered to your opponent's core along a center line, the more directly that force is transmitted to his body. The effect is similar to that of continually slamming a battering ram against a door. No matter how strong, it can only sustain so many blows before it collapses. Doing the 360 defense requires you keep your body in motion at all times, using your arms to defend different angles of attack. The key is keeping your arms at an oblique angle with your hands open and straight so that you don't take any blows straight on. Each is deflected down the angle of your forearm, which reduces its impact. Pinder. Powered by the running start, and the most powerful muscles in the body, the quadriceps. The initial kick lands at 15 miles per hour. The second kick creates three times the injury producing energy as the first, delivering over 650 pounds of force. That's like taking a shot from a sledgehammer to the face, more than enough to score a knockout and rearrange some facial features. The X kick draws its power differently than most kicks. Once your foot reaches the apex above your opponent's head, your body's momentum, combined with the ease of downward acceleration due to gravity, can reach speeds over 20 miles per hour. That's enough to generate more than 550 pounds of force at the point of impact, easily breaking the nose or shattering the clavicle. <laughs> The move is difficult, but devastating. There's no opposing object to push against, so all the energy of the move must come from the momentum of the leap and the acceleration of the kick. The snapping motion of the lower leg functions much like a coiled spring. When unleashed, the kick reaches impact speeds of 20 miles per hour and delivers up to 400 pounds of force to the opponent's chest. The key to this synergy of speed and power is punch technique punch location, and punch frequency. With your elbows tucked in behind your fist, the energy of each punch is maximized. And because the punch is delivered to your opponent's core along a center line, the more directly that force is transmitted to his body. The effect is similar to that of continually slamming a battering ram against a door. No matter how strong, it can only sustain so many blows before it collapses. This kick is all about speed. The further the foot travels, the greater its acceleration, and the more dangerous a weapon it becomes. Powered by the muscles of the hip flexor and the quadriceps, by the time your foot reaches your opponent's throat, it's traveling nearly 40 miles per hour. That type of speed yields over 1,000 pounds of force, enough to puncture the Adam's apple and crush your windpipe. The tornado kick is a study in controlled chaos. A quick spin confuses your opponent. Then one knee is thrust into the air, launching your entire body high enough to fire a powerful kick. The momentum generated by your body weight rotating freely, combined with a powerful hip thrust, creates a devastating blow of over 700 pounds of force upon impact. More than enough to permanently damage the hyaline cartilage that protects the larynx and spinal cord. Hold over your opponent. By wrapping up his striking leg at the upper thigh, you've placed your opponent in what's called conditional stability. If he remains stationary, he could technically maintain his balance indefinitely. But by driving him backward and initiating a sweep of his other leg, you've added two destabilizing factors, and the loose center of gravity simply cannot hold. The power of this move comes from the spin. The rotation of the torso 
combined with the foot at the extremity of that rotation, generates speeds of over 20 miles per hour. By the time the heel connects with the solar plexus, it is traveling 60 miles per hour and transfers over 450 pounds of force, enough to break ribs and even damage internal organs.